Hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode from the Rock to the Cloud. Uh, as always, uh, you've got me, Tom Hall, um, your hapless host, um, who's um, fuddling his way through server technology. We like to cover, obviously, everything from the Rock, ROK, Reseller Option Kit, servers, to the Cloud, Azure, which also means blue. Don't know why we called it that, but there it is. Uh, it's a shade of blue. Um, but it, like you know, these are just classic Microsoft way of thinking. Let's 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 confuse everybody by calling it funny stuff. So our goal is to demystify some of these things, not by me doing that, but me inviting a special guest. Um, we have got a special guest this time. We're going to talk to this special guest now and let him introduce himself. Last time we talked about his hat. Uh, but today we're going to talk about your t-shirts. So you're always wearing the, I know, it's just a fashion, this is a, it's a fashion, uh, a fashion blog. Uh, blog. The, the, the uh, word, the that's, word that's, fashion uh, and, and Rick Claus <laughs> do not go together. I'll just let you know. I mean, maybe, maybe they should, maybe they should. I mean, you, you're definitely the most fashionable man in server technology. Um, <laughs> Pierre, sorry, no offense, and he's a nice guy as well. <laughs> uh, right, and uh, anyway, so, but there's, you know, there's a few out there, but you're synonymous with a certain look. Hat is one of those things, and then also this MVP top. There's a tenuous link, though, to the UK, isn't there? Why why, why you like these tops? Let's, let, let's find yeah. out more. Yeah, so, so I'm Rick Claus. I've been doing stuff with Microsoft for far too long. Uh, and um, this particular jersey, as an example, uh, is something that came out of a relationship that the Canadian team, because I'm from Canada, had with the UK team uh, back in the day, uh, decades ago almost, uh, where a good <laughs> friend of mine uh, was the marketing manager for uh, this particular group of evangelists back then is what we used to call ourselves. Uh, and he decided that the speaker shirts were rubbish. I guess you would use that term. Is that the right, right term? Yeah, rubbish, yeah. Rubbish, yeah. We so say rubbish, he, yeah. he decided, let's have something that's a bit sharper looking. And so he managed to come up with a rugby jersey. So this is a real Kuga rugby jersey that you could play rugby with. Not that I know how to play rugby. Um, and uh, it's it stands the test of time. And so he would have a different <laughs> version, slightly different version of this every year that he was doing this particular role. Uh, and he made yeah. sure that he would give them to different influential people. And for some reason, they thought that my influential in influential. Uh, but uh, in, in the previous episode, you couldn't see it. There was actually a Union yeah. Jack on the back. Uh, this one does not have the Union Jack. So first of all, thank okay. you for having me back. Because uh, <laughs> that last episode was so fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, when, when I when, when I do speaking engagements, and they're asking me what I can wear for my wardrobe, I'm like, I'm a simple man. I have one hat, <laughs> two shirts, and one person, so that's what you get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, look, I'm. We're very, very glad to have you. And um, you know, uh, you were recently on the the, the launch of Server 2022 with all those, um, you know, all those other experts. But for me, you were the one that stole the show. You were my favorite. So, <laughs> well, thank you. Just saying. Just saying. Um, so yeah, no, that's fair enough. So um, today, Rick, we're talking about um, obviously Server Twenty Twenty Two is launched. Hybrid Cloud is 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 the buzz, um, but actually, you kind of need to manage it in a modern way. So we're going to talk about System Center, and obviously, also one of my favorite things uh, is is WAC. <laughs> Whack. Are you referring yeah, we're to that about we well. reset hammer from from the last episode? Whack <laughs> it with the hammer. Exactly. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> although last time I muted myself and I managed to disconnect the the video call, and you just covered for me, so that was perfect. Um, nice. So yeah, hard reset. Um, but um, maybe if I had a, a sort of a management console to to control me and make me more more sensible, um, it would right. be whack. Uh, right. So let's talk a little bit about whack. So. What is WAC? Yeah, so I mean, if you think about it, <laughs> ma ma yeah. managing servers, uh, yeah, what is WAC? WAC is Windows Admin Center. But when you're managing servers, um, if you start off, like I started off literally as the guy that jiggled the cable to get the printer to work way, way, way back when. I had a small environment. I then gradually grew it to more and more people with PCs and desktops and servers and stuff like that. The way you manage servers in the Windows world was you obviously had to log into the GUI interface. You had to go in and use MMC consoles uh, to be able to go off and to configure different pieces, make users, 
can define an Active Directory, like all sort of stuff. If you're if you've been in this industry long enough, you've obviously worked with Windows Admin Center, sorry, with with MMC, uh, Microsoft Management Consoles. Um, then we needed to do stuff at scale, and so scale wise is when we got into PowerShell to be able to script and do things remotely against boxes at scale. Uh, but that's command line stuff, and that's going back to my Linux and Unix days. Uh, prior to Microsoft technologies. And so scale-wise, PowerShell, automation, definitely progressive way to go to be able to manage things. But sometimes, you know, command line is fast, it's automated, it's scriptable, but you don't necessarily have the full rich view of being able to manage something and troubleshoot something. So you have to dive in back to those older tools like MMC to go off and to manage the event logs and to take a look at certificates that are about to expire or go off and create user accounts. It's different MMC for different things. Um, when you start to grow that environment even bigger, that's when you start to look at like a data center style solution with lots and lots of servers. And that's when System Center comes into play. And that was evolution throughout the years. System Center has grown and added more products to it. And it's still completely viable and people still use it. And it's very much active for managing data center size scale systems for uh, you know, trends of what's going on across your, your different things. Where Windows Admin Center fits into this is basically, let's make a lightweight remote management server capable platform that gives you deep access into individual boxes for troubleshooting. That's how I like to kind of phrase this stuff now. It, if, I, if I know that there's something going wrong with my system, because System Center has alerted me to the fact that something's going on, um, or, or I just need to do my regular uh, checking on the systems to see how my event logs are doing. Um, I would use my Windows Admin Center platform install to be able to go off and look at individual servers or run reports across a couple of different servers uh, to troubleshoot it. Uh, and then I could go and remotely manage that box. It requires no software, no agents. It just simply needs to have WinRM enabled on the target systems. So basically modern versions of Windows Server 2012, 2016, 2019, that sort of stuff. Um, and then provided your security context of the user that you're signed on as, or that you equip the server to represent you as you're using it, whenever it reaches out to do something in one of those boxes, it's doing it as you. So it's doing some remote execution or some remote PowerShell on that box through WinR WinRM to be able to populate the data but it gives it to you in literally a browser. So it's a browser interface, modern GUI and graphical that can punch through a firewall if you need to, because it's you know protected with a certificate that allows you to simply lightweight browse to that box. And then from that gateway box, you then spider off into the different systems you wanna go off and manage. So architecturally, it's a server install that is a management console that centrally gives you access to your other boxes uh, but it's used and is optimized for going deep on individual boxes to go off and troubleshoot and to manage with a modern interface. All the other previous ways all still work. But in an environment where you have Windows Server Core installs, because you should be using Core as your base install, doing stuff at the command line can be troublesome to load new drivers, to copy files, to, to go and configure stuff. And that's where Windows Admin Center reaches out and touches that Server Core box it makes it really easy to go off and manage through a graphical interface um, without you having to do stuff. How's that for a good explanation? Does that work for you? <laughs> well, I could, I, I couldn't get a word in edgeways, but it was very, very <laughs> precise and and covered everything. And I, I was going to say, uh, well, my next question. Great show. Be, Thank you very much, everybody. It's yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. Um, well, so that that's what it is. Um, that's how you get it, which was going to be my next question. Yeah, I suppose the only thing, and I know you're not like you're not sales guy, but I how much does it cost? I didn't get it yet. I saved that part right. for your next question. Okay, well, how do you get it? <laughs> it's literally a ma a, man a way of just going to your favorite search engine and type in Windows Admin Center Download. Um, there's probably a short URL I could give you, but I forget what it is. I think it's like download wac, so aka.ms slash download WAC for Windows Admin Center. Uh, basically, you get it through the eval, uh, the eval center at Microsoft. You register for it. And I didn't mention this part. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. So, so long as you, you have- You just covered my next question, which is cost. Let's see. <laughs> so there is no cost. The Windows, yeah, yeah, Windows Admin Center doesn't cost you anything, except you have to have a licensed copy 
of Windows Server 2019 or Windows Server 2022 um, that you need to have to be able to, to, to run it. So there's no CALs required for it. It's just simply register to download it. Once you've downloaded it, you have to install it in a variety of different configurations. And I can talk about those if you want, but basically it installs a web system that then displays that web page. You then add in the servers you want to manage and then Bob's your uncle. You're off working with those systems and managing them as you see fit. Okay, so it's free as long as you've got the right license. It's available download from the interwebs, um, which anybody can get because they've got an internet connection. Um, it's, it's, it tries to get all your Microsoft technology all in one place, makes that interface nice and easy to use. But can you use it for your Hyper-Vs as well? So, yeah. so, it, so, so at, at, it's, as you add it to, as you add a system to the console, uh, based yeah. on the version of the operating system, you have the ability yeah. to manage different levels of stuff. So the older the systems that you add, there's very limited stuff you can do. The more modern versions okay. of stuff that you add, you literally have a new version of performance monitor, a new way of managing VMs, a new way of installing, creating VMs through a web interface. Um, and you can even manage clusters and create clusters. Like, like if, if you've ever, I, I, if people are watching this and they've done hardware and they've sold hardware and they're working with stuff before, setting up clusters was a pain in the butt um, in the past. And I used to love the fact that if you wanted to manage your cluster, you would hit the Windows key and type in fail, press enter, and then the failover cluster manager tool would pop up. <laughs> and that's how you would manage that particular cluster or create that cluster. Um, yeah. Now the web interface with Windows Admin Center is literally a wizard to be able to set up and configure a cluster from scratch. As long as you have the two nodes working correctly and talking as part of the same domain, uh, you can install a cluster with this like that. It is so simple with Windows Admin Center. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, Beautiful. architecturally, it's simply a lightweight web instance that you install on a box that then allows you to go off and to start to manage and reach out to your different servers that happen to be out there. Okay, so it's something we kind of half talked about earlier, but um, I think maybe we might have even talked about it before we were recording, but obviously System Center and Windows Admin Center, that they're, they're kind of, they're, they're both there, but what is the what is the difference? Just right. for the boys and girls. Right. So, so the, I alluded to it in the kind of progression of how things have been managed over the years. And so System Center is one of those tools. It's a suite of tools and a suite of products people use still today, still viable. It's great for doing configuration management of multiple desktops and servers on a large scale. It does error reporting. It does operations management. It does ticketing. It does data protection and backup, all these different things that you have to license to be able to use. That's the big key word here. You license the different stuff you want to use inside of System Center. And you are required to go in and to obviously um, buy those licenses and have all this extra functionality. System Center is your scale. Like I need, I've got a large number of servers I wanna manage. I want a holistic view of everything. That's what you're gonna be using System Center for. Windows Admin Center fits in there by basically working in parallel to System Center, choose your product that you're talking about, um, and it gives you the ability to click down a level and look in at those individual boxes for additional configuration, troubleshooting, or, or research, and that sort of stuff. The other thing that Windows Admin Center is really good at is it enables all this hybrid stuff that we've been talking about in the previous episode and in this episode, where System Center looks at your, your, your lay of the land for all your systems and all your data centers and that sort of stuff. And it ties into Azure for extra functionality. It really lights up the solutions with Windows Admin Center to be able to go in and bring in a backup solution, bring in a file server um, expansion solution called Azure File Sync. It brings in disaster recovery with Azure Site Recovery. It brings in Kubernetes if you wanted to bring in Kubernetes into your world. That's gateway to get into it. And the easy button to install it is using Windows Admin Center uh, once you've registered it and once you've configured it to talk to your Azure subscription. So think of Windows Admin Center, hybrid, deep investigative tools and troubleshooting. So everyone should go off and use it. Uh, and then System Center, bigger picture view of all the entire uh, horizon of all your different systems that happen to be out there. 
Perfect. And I know you kind of, you said already that you can just download Windows Admin Center, but you don't have to have System Center to use Admin Center, right? They're not, they're mutually yeah, compatible, correct. but not, they don't have to, they don't have to exist together. Uh, so yeah, if you've got a smaller no, estate, you can just work off of a, a whack scenario for like, if you've got like a regional office, you've got like three, yeah. three servers and you've got like a bit of Azure in the cloud that, that whack scenario could just be perfect for you. Mm -hmm. So perfect. how about if I show you the, I mean, show you the interface just so you can see Go what, what we're yeah. talking about here. Cause sometimes, I mean, yeah. we talk conceptually about a lot of sort of stuff. So yeah. this is my server 2019 box. It's ugly. It's a simplistic install that's running. It's a member of my domain and it actually is running as Windows Server Core. So there's no user interface beyond this text box that I have. I've actually gone ahead and installed Edge on this box solely for the purpose of managing Windows Admin Center. So this box doesn't do any other roles except the member server with this uh, Windows Admin Center uh, install on top of it. And so I fire up my browser and it gives me the interface for what my different systems happen to look like. Uh, on the system. I add in new connections by simply hitting that add button. And then the choices that it gives me are add in additional servers, add in a Windows PC if you want to manage a Windows PC, but then also add and create a new cluster if I wanted to. And even, yeah. as I mentioned, bridge to that new world, adding and creating VMs inside of Azure as well. So I've already added in a couple of nodes that you can see here on the screen, uh, which include two different Azure Stack HCI boxes. Uh, we talked about Azure Stack and Azure Stack HCI in the previous episodes. Uh, and if I just click into one of those nodes, it authenticated against that node for what I'm allowed to do based on who I am running this browser interface. So I have administrative access on that box. What does it give me? An overview page of the tomb, what I call the tombstone information of important stuff, CPU, RAM, uh, configuration, hard drive space, network traffic. And these are real time graphs. They're not terribly exciting because it's not a big workload on this box, uh, but they are real time graphs that show you details about what's going on on that box. You don't get this with that command line interface of just simply characters in terminal window. This is required viewing to properly manage that box at depth with Windows Admin Center. And then if you take a look at the most common things that you would be doing, well, as an example, over here on the left, choosing the event viewer. Um, the event viewer is not your traditional MMC snap-in anymore. It's a database of all, it, it queries your local event logs to be able to show you what that happens to uh, look like. In this case, as an example, I can go in here and say, show me uh, the last 24 hours, any event logs that have happened on my system. So I can now view a critical error or warning state inside my system log with regards to blue, a whole bunch of informationals, uh, some reds I should probably take a look at, 54 reds, and then even a couple of yellows, which are some warnings uh, for the last two days for this particular box that I'm drilling into as one way of being able to go off and view visually what my event logs happen to look like. Uh, if I wanna go off and do a um, connection over and take a look at my storage configuration for this box, again, very difficult with a server core install, I can see that I actually have a uh, disk number four, which is a RAID volume configured on this particular box. I can get the proper handle to pull this up so you can see it. Uh, and you can see that I've got my OS drive running on uh, my C drive. Uh, I've got my different partitions that represent that particular box. Uh, and if I take a look at volumes on this, on this guy, uh, I can see that I've got my traditional C drive and recovery volumes happen to be there. Now this is a cluster node and so I don't see the additional attached storage on this box because it's part of a clustered shared volume. I'd have to go through the cluster interface to go and view that information on Windows Admin Center. That's why I only have the C drive on this particular box. Um, managing updates, again, rather difficult on a server core install. Uh, this is actually a good view of updates that are required for this particular box. Uh, again, not a different tool I have to worry about. <laughs> oh, look at that they're still trying to get me to update Serverlite on the server box because <laughs> it's always there. You always have to update it, right? So I can now see these different settings and I can even take a look at the history of different updates that have happened on this thing. So deep, deeply, quickly jumping into the interface of what it looks like to manage a particular box. But the magic that I like the best over here is this tie-in to individual systems. So here is Azure Backup as an example. 
we using this interface, I can configure Azure Backup on this particular node once I've authenticated. Let's see if I authenticated correctly. Yes, I did. Look at that. Um, and Azure Backup is already set up for me uh, inside of my subscription. And I just now want to enable it on this one server, but I don't want to go through the Azure portal to go off and do that. I literally just want to go ahead and say, yep, I want to back up the system state. I want to use the schedule that I've already defined, which in this case is back it up on Mondays, uh, and then put in a, uh, uh, encryption. So that particular backup is going to stay encrypted. Uh, this, I have to put in a very strong password here. It's a lot of dots. I know. I'm trying to see if I can save it. So hopefully that worked. Boom. It configures the local box. It does a secure encryption certificate for this particular box, makes the connection with the agent using Azure Arc back up to the backup agent, uh, and then allows me to go in and configure backup on this particular box. I did not have to go physically to the box, remote desktop yeah. into it, or log in to be able to configure this agent. It just went off and worked. And that's part of the beauty of this hybrid piece of what Windows Admin Center brings to you to dive in and look at a specific box. I'm going to stop and pause for some questions and maybe um, talk about something else if you need me to. <laughs> I well, no, I, 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 it, well, it, 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 every time that you know I see this, it's actually so it's so simple. Um, like you don't have to be fay necessarily even with how the azure interface works you just need to know what things you need to do with your servers and i, I think that you know a lot of people out there are like oh the cloud's going to take away my job um and, and it's not what it's going to do is enhance what you do and actually make things easier now obviously yeah. within this as well you, we can manage third-party products and things as well i'm assuming it's not just as simple as just you know like we've grown up a bit from those dark days where we were like oh, no it's only our stuff and everything works with our we're not apple basically right so um <laughs> like we're, <laughs> we're 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 willing to work with other people and make our technology work with their technology to give people the best experience so can, yeah. can we talk about that like 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 how have we grown up around improving that uh, within windows server 2022 and admin yeah. center so uh, Windows admin, yeah, I want to get it right. Get yeah, no, yeah. So, so on, on the Windows admin side of things, Windows admin center side of things, um, I can actually show you how we integrate in this. The model that we use is called extensions, uh, and third-party extensions can be added into this. And so, this is again just a different view, looking at my server selector. But if I go over here and choose my settings, I can actually go down and take a look at my extensions for this particular box. And extension-wise. We have a whole bunch of different extensions. And here's one actually, uh, my friend over at BitOps has created one. BitOps, if you don't know, is an, an extra layer of management that you can put on top of viewing multiple systems, but it's not as massive and as encompassing as System Center, but it goes and, and does it for you know a dozen or two dozen servers uh, at a scalable level. Uh, and it's tied into Windows Admin Center as an interface, even though it's a separate third-party product that someone else developed. I'll call out Dell EMC connectivity as well for deeper, rich resources and access to the information from their driver level and from their configuration level for their EMC hardware stuff. Um, I already have this one installed, which is my extension for Data On. Data On is the provider of the hardwares that I'm using for my Azure Stack HCI box. We've got deeper level of integration for drivers and configuration from Data On directly from here. All these extensions are available simply from the registered catalog. You just go in and you say, yeah, I want to install that extension. And then potentially, if it's a third party, you might have to buy a license from them or register or something like that. But we open up that gateway for people to go off and to use and to work with the admin center interface to be able to go off and, and, and work with it. Admin center is the best part because here's how you keep it up to date. You literally turn on updates uh, down here at the bottom. and by default, I've turned this on to auto update whenever there is a new monthly update that comes for cumulative updates for Windows Server. If the box happens to have Windows Admin Center installed on it, it will get the latest bits and versions as we release new ones. Uh, and then likewise, the same thing applies to the extensions. As new extensions come out, there's an update button you can press. It also updates as well too. So the functionality is always gonna be increasing. Windows System Center is a much, again, larger, bigger, broader product. 
uh, and that is going to require new incremental updates. During Windows Server Summit a couple of weeks ago, we actually announced that the next version of Windows Server, sorry, of System Center is going to be coming out in uh, the first quarter of 2022. So basically, uh, in the spring fall time here in Northern Hemisphere, North America, uh, it's going to sorry spring summertime is when the next version of Server 2020 uh, of System Center 2022 is going to be coming out. Uh, that's a bigger release cycle. It's a big major thing that requires the yeah. next update. Unlike Windows Admin Center, which is very light and agile to bring new stuff literally weekly if you needed to, uh, yeah, to yeah. be able to have extra functionality. Cool. And that's I think that's three demos in one session. So uh, I think you're on a on a bit of a record, Rick. Um, so no, we haven't got a huge amount of time left. Um, and I yeah. you know I think like thank you for bringing us into um, the system center world of WAC and letting us see let us see stuff. Um, I think um, you know we'll summarize in a little bit, but um, just. Again, from the launch of 2022 that happened um, a couple of weeks ago, was, uh, one of the things that I think uh, Bernardo Caldas, he mentioned, was about um, not just the accreditation, but there's some learning paths. So can you can you maybe just tell the audience about the learning paths around server? Because I think that's interesting. Oh, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, you're, you're hitting right all the right buttons for, for stuff that I'm interested in here for sure. So. First of all, uh, one of my friends, uh, I don't know if you've had him on the show yet. You should probably try to line him up. I'll hook you up if, you, if you're not connected to him, is Oren Thomas. Oren Thomas is a good, good mate down in Australia. Um, he also has a hat, but it's not as nice as mine. Uh, he, uh, he has been working diligently to create content for operations and for IT pros and, in, and investing in their skills to bring them up to a hybrid world or a more modern world as their on-premises world evolves uh, to make them ready to be able to go off and connect up to Azure when it makes sense for different things. Azure Stack HCI is one of those technologies that we both identified and the team identified as being something we need to invest in for uh, being able to go off and, and enable this hybrid capability. So there's actually a whole learning path on Microsoft Learn that allows you to go through and experience and learn about how Azure Stack HCI works uh, and how you can integrate it inside your environment, how you can use it and monitor it. You might see a couple of people you might know with some short videos inside of there. I think uh, um, Thomas uh, has, uh, Thomas Maurer has got a cameo appearance. I think I'm in there too. Sonia Cuff, I think is in there, maybe even Pierre. So you've had some of those folks on your show. Um, that we, we, we pop up and appear for little different video vignettes to explain different pieces about learning how to use Azure Stack HCI, learning how to use Windows Admin Center, and also there's a big investment in a whole bunch of different content for Windows Server 2022. So um, I can possibly give you some short links. You can put them in the details page of this particular video later on in the post event side of things, yeah. but definitely Microsoft Learn's got you covered for Azure Stack HCI and Windows Server 2022 with current up-to-date content and more stuff coming out too as we go. Because we realize this is an yeah. important upgrade. This is a moment in time when you can start to use some Azure technologies to solve tangible problems you have in your on-premises world in a hybrid fashion. It's not about taking everything and migrate to the cloud and lose your job. It's not about that at all. <laughs> it's about making your life easier and solving the pain points you got. This is literally music to my ears because I've been saying this to people for ages and, you know, like the, the cloud penetration in the UK is reaching almost like a saturation point. So like what what's left like after, after everybody that wants to go pure cloud has gone pure cloud, well, then the world's going to get more complicated and that becomes hybrid. So it's, it's, it's not as simple as one thing is the answer to, to this is not going to solve your like, you know, there's no Nirvana thing. It's actually, what do you need to do and how do you need to get there and what technology have you got and what's available? That's really what Windows Server 2022 is all about. It's about you know, giving people that choice. So I love that. And I love the fact that we're also teaching people how to use it with, with our learning paths. So that's amazing. So thank you for doing that, Rick. Really appreciate it. We're just going to do no the problem. memes really quick. Um, so we're okay, going to move to the good. meme part of the show. So get, get, get ready. I will try not to um, like mute myself like last time, or uh, in fact, close the whole window and let you just speak through the whole means. So, right, producers, right. I love having producers because it makes you feel like a Flash TV person. Right. Producers, it makes easy. Uh, show us meme one. Cloud computing. <laughs> so, when it's raining, so when it's raining, I'm losing data. 
what, what is this saying? I believe, what, to technically, I believe we call this data center egress. Uh, <laughs> Rain is data center egress from the cloud uh, uh, what's there. So uh, that's where I would come in with this particular one for cloud computing. It's like you said, cloud cloud has just become so ubiquitous and used by so many different people in so many different ways over the last decade or more. Uh, it's it's more than just someone else's data center. Absolutely more. Yeah. It's got specialized solutions that solve your problems that may or may not fit with your particular scenario. My biggest thing is the skills you have right now and the stuff you're working with now is absolutely relevant and working inside of the cloud environment, in the hybrid environment, or in your on-premises environment. So uh, invest in those skills and simply, yeah, don't worry about when it rains. We'll keep your data safe inside of those different geographical areas for you. Which, which is fair enough, but I, I must admit, I feel like the dinosaur. So this is great. You're, you're, you're moving me on a bit. So, right. Okay. Um, like I said, we, we've talked a lot in this episode, so we're, we're, we're fast. These are fast memes. So, uh, meme two, we're going to jump to because we're, we're short on time. Um, yep. right. Okay. So, uh, when the computer says press any button to continue, so you press the off button. <laughs> okay. I get that. <laughs> that's that, that's I, that I, I remember back in the back in the old days when i used to have to work uh, help desk and support a whole bunch of users that were just getting used to pcs and how they worked and client server technologies yeah. i actually created a because uh, i saw it online i created a button that was called the any key and it was literally just a sticker that i would put on the space bar <laughs> so that I, I literally had joe from accounting that would you know what what key do i press it says press the any key i don't know what to do and so i'm like yeah there it is right there <laughs> It's 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 so true though. It's so true. I think like that's that if I it, yeah if I was talking to my if I was talking to mum and dad, um, which often I am their tech support. Um, it's, it's, and I, I do say to I, I have had, had that conversation with, that with my mum. Where I'm from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've had that I've had that any key conversation with my mum. So yeah, actually to be fair, yeah. that's we, we need those stickers. Um, I think that should be something that they put on all computers from now on. I think that'd be really helpful. Um, all right. Okay. So look, we've, um, we've, we've talked at length about a lot of different stuff. Uh, I'm going to summarize really quickly. It's, and again, it's always good because this is like a spot check to make sure that I was listening. Um, okay. So system center for large scale, um, viewing that like high level management plane of what you've got in your estate. Whack Windows Admin Center for that more targeted view, which is going to give you the in-depth diagnostic management of whether it's on-prem or cloud for your own little environment. And you know, yeah. that's where you can actually punch up extra services as and when needed, things like Azure Backup, all of that stuff you can do straight from Admin Center. It's totally flexible. It's in fact free as long as you've got already purchased the correct licensing. Um, and we would love you to go and demo it. And there's a place where you can learn about it as well, because there's learning resources also. Oh. That is what we learned today, Rick. Nice. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad to have been part of your learning experience and helping you out with this. I'm also <laughs> glad you figured out your mute button too. It makes it a bit more entertaining to uh, actually well, tell someone. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, I actually don't think you probably even need me here, to be honest with you. Like, you're that, you're that good. <laughs> um, but look, everybody, look, we're very, very grateful to have Rick. Round of applause for Rick. That's only me here Thank producers you. round of applause Good. um but like, we're very very grateful for you tuning into this episode of the rock to the cloud um, again if you've got any questions or comments drop them in the in the comments box or in fact get in touch uh make sure we'll find an expert um as rick said there's a whole army of people here in microsoft who want to talk to you and um, and talk to me as well which is quite they don't actually want to talk to me but we, we force them to um so yeah okay. join in join me next time for the next episode from the rock to the cloud see you later rick thanks very much for joining us today have a good one cheers <laughs>